have you back with us. In the last episode, we discussed about the increasing significance of sustainability in tech companies and the initiatives that they are taking to enable sustainability in their organizations. Continuing our conversation today with Aurobindo Nanda and Amit Kulkarni, we'll discuss more about sustainability as a rising business opportunity and the key client industries that are front runners with respect to sustainability charter. So hi Amit, hi Nanda, welcome back to the session and it's good to have you back with us today for the session. Now taking the discussion forward, uh, you know, from the last we had, we had we had discussed, you know, the kind of initiatives that the companies are taking and how how client journeys are being defined with respect to sustainability. I would like to probably start with you, uh, Amit, and then maybe uh, Mr. Nanda can follow. As to how do we foresee sustainability as a rising business opportunity, you know, basis the key verticals that, uh, you know, you focus on. So how do you see that? I think it is a buzzword today, Neha. I think, um, you know, one, almost every company, um, you know, almost every, uh, has already kind of made a pledge. You know, it is kind of, you know, everybody is prerogative that they have to go and achieve and, and we see a very, very sincere effort from that perspective that all companies are making. But the inherent element still stays that companies being companies, there is also going to be a commercial element while looking at sustainability as well. I mean, you know, because at the end of the day, when you look at a sustainability, you are trying to reduce everything. You're trying to reduce consumption. You're trying to reduce mass. You're trying to reduce, uh, you know, emissions everything that comes in yeah. is in a way actually giving a benefit to our customers and and that is where today most of the customers are uh, while you know they have done their you know or they're doing their assessment of their current footprint defining their goals they're also looking at what is that investment they would make and what is it that they would get in return so uh, an roi vis-a-vis -vis, say a commercial element as well as an environment element is, is a key factor for you know for both of them and i think where we are able to kind of be bring uh, both these elements together and and kind of approach the customers i think there there is an opportunity where you know we would be able to contribute uh, you know to to their uh, journeys as well i think while there are very very definite solutions that could go as i was mentioning in the last session where you know we would look at their operations in water we could look at in their energy conservations and and making their products green a lot of so you know but what happens is today there is a kind of a i mean it, it is a very broad subject number one there could be everything or a lot of things that come in can actually be contributing to sustainability so it's not left only to one organization to kind of think and you know go to achieve the goals and as the time goes by you know why because from from a zero to first ten percent, that's going to be an easier journey. But as you move from the first ten percent to twenty percent of you know the of achievement of goal, it is start you know your journey is going to start getting difficult because your avenues are start going to you know kind of uh, you know they will start reducing for you, and that is where now you know customers if you are able to come up with solutions that can make your products green, you are able to come up with alternate materials. Look at look at a future. I mean you know. Uh, like for example, uh, you know, a lot of wind turbines now are coming to end of life. Now it's a huge problem because while a lot of the metallic and, and you know the structures can be reused, what are we going to do with the composite blades that are on the wind turbine? And that's that's a pretty huge number that is going to be available. So if if somebody is going to be able to come up with a solution to reuse those blades to kind of maybe use in some infrastructure aspects to kind of you know use it in construction or something like that. These are going to be some of the unique solutions that are going to enable uh, the whole sustainability elements. While the, these engineering aspects are there, I think another big opportunity lies in the digital side of the business for our customers. Uh, because one of, one of the key as, aspect is that customers would have to now major track and monitor their performance vis-a-vis -vis the sustainability. And for everything now, you know, for to do that, it has to come from a digital element, especially because most of the customers or most of the companies are global today. They have facilities across globe, but their goal is, you know, global and, and has to, is driven from a, from a kind of a central area. And so to be able to kind of, you know, 
track what what initiatives what interventions are being implemented and then monitor in real time what is the impact that is coming i mean it could be as simple as you know i'm having my ev charging stations been rolled out but then how how are they working how is the performance happening how can we kind of you know connect them back uh, into the data of of actual conservation to say water conservation how much i have really saved what is the initiative I implemented what difference did it make how much of carbon footprint did i save is is kind of something which you know as a solutions uh, you know customers would be looking at and as you as you kind of expand it then this can kind of starts becoming much larger and larger and but it's a mandated requirement that comes in so a digital element also becomes a big part uh, as a part of the business opportunity so so nanda your thought on the piece yeah so essentially if you look at what are the, we are trying to do uh, to enable uh, become more sustainable is it's about doing more with less right uh now if you have to do more with with less resources or as a consumption of resources then anything that that we do or any solutions that we build it has to become a lot smarter to help our customers to enable to say either reduce or reuse you know the four hours recycle repair replace kind of stuff it has to happen and like amit pointed out all of this is possible key aspect of in that journey is digital enablement right now if you have to digitally enable our customers or customers customer for all of these activities then my first point said getting data giving people the visibility as to where you stand and once we do that giving them the ability to manage this and then control them now many of times of these activities could obviously be done remotely now and a key example of this is like if i am enabling certain things for my customers i have to go in and use a lot of sensors let us take an example of a water recycling or a water treatment plant now i need to enable to figure it out whether the plant is functioning properly or not that means i need to put sensors all over the place be it in the water treatment plant or in machineries and various other things to acquire those data and help enable the end user to control the kind of chemicals that are going to this am i adding more am i adding less or am i not even adding and hence the water is just flowing as is it need not be even functioning now when we look at some of this activities that we do that creates a world of opportunities for organizations like us wherein with call the so called uh, iot kind of enablement technologies that can be brought in right or kind of analytics that we do from all of this data that we collect be it predictive or be it preventive kind of information that we can provide to our customers so if we have to enable or help our customers or even ourselves because some of this technology is also we consume ourselves within our own organization so that is where the business opportunity really opens up for solution providing organization or companies like us and that's 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 a very big opportunity which all of us should leverage uh, and consume ourselves as well as help enable it for our customers so so i i think from i'm from the discussion you know we can be definitely see as a big business opportunity and you said you know as amit rightly pointed out when you think commercially you have to look at it as, from a business aspect as well so uh, moving forward maybe maybe nanda you can show some light on you know uh, which verticals you see are you know in the are the front runners when it comes to sustainability and maybe then i'll move to amit to hear his uh, uh, thought there yeah in in the verticals or industries that uh, we operate in and hence we see most of this are coming in the primary two verticals that we see is industrial and manufacturing i have to broadly classify it as that so many of these industrial companies or manufacturing companies uh the fact of the business that they are in uh they are uh you know kind of creating or consuming lot of stuff and hence also creating a lot of uh pollutions or whatever stays they are in and that is where we see a lot of traction coming in uh we have seen it coming in uh, automotive we have coming it in certain aspects of the healthcare we have seen it coming in 
travel and transport and things like that. We have also seen in industries, for example, even in an education segment, where in there are a lot of people coming in together to do something, right? Need not be necessarily always a manufacturing or industrial kind of vertical, uh, which is people heavy or people intensive. We have also seen, uh, you know, uh, solutions that we have built in wherein uh, uh, this, uh, the solutions can help reduce the consumptions, be it in terms of their water, be it in terms of the resources that they use, uh, either consume or recycle some of those. So our, we have seen a mixture of all of these things. And that's where, you know, we bring our solutions around this. We develop our solutions and take them to our customers. Sure, sure. Thanks, Anna. So, Amit, I think uh, as Nanda just pointed out, industrial and manufacturing. So I think you would also share that uh, those industries, your your side of the story. Absolutely. I I would I would kind of you know maybe twist your question a bit uh, to say basically you know it's not about a particular industry being a for, front for uh, no, a front runner uh, from a sustainability perspective. I think globally it is a phenomenon that has caught up. Uh, what what is interesting is probably each domain or each sector has a different element of sustainability that is coming in, and it's also interesting to kind of track how and where, uh, you know, such kind of, or what what is it that, you know, particular sector is currently focused on. I think uh, one of the, one of the universal factor we see is energy. That, that is, mm-hmm. that is a big ask today. Maybe even the current global scenario is driving that, impacting it in a way, but, you know, uh, each one trying to see how, how the energy can be conserved, conserved how, how the clean energy can come in, how, how it can be more efficient. People are trying to now generate megawatt range of uh, hydrogen using wind turbines, for example, to uh, tide over the energy crisis, probably, you know, that is happening in Europe and, and, and so many things that are coming up, which become, you know, one of the key areas of, of you know, the sustainability solutions that is coming in. And it, uh, you know, but if, if we just extend it a bit, one of the, uh, con- most of the contributing industry probably is more of oil and gas. I mean, you know, it inherent nature of the business is, you know, it is kind of digging into and, and pulling out the petroleum, you know, mining industry for that matter. You know, these are these are polluting and for them, a natural transition from where they are today as a as a fossil fuel is getting into more green fuel. So we see a lot of our customers which are into oil and gas are kind of transitioning to bring in, you know, a, a balancing solutions from more cleaner and greener and more efficient energy sources. Uh, you know, you take this to a uh, uh, products, you know, so smaller products, each one is looking at making the products more efficient and energy consumption becomes one of the factor there. Apart from that, as we talked about some time back, uh, the digital is going to be a factor for all of them, which is again a universal. Uh, and But if you get into, say, uh, automotive sector, that is where they are looking now at EVs coming in. Uh, how, but EVs, are they really, uh, you know, fully sustainable or we are going to run into a problem of managing the lithium ion batteries that are coming in? So how to manage those problems are some of the factors which, you know, automobile is looking at. Uh, I, and I think one of the driving factor for sustainability, and again, this could be more universal uh, element is uh, more to do with the product itself. So that this is basically where you know, assessing the whole life cycle of my product that is coming and figuring out where all can I reduce, where all can I make it more efficient and where all can I make it green. I mean, we know, uh, uh, for example, a telecom custom, you know, uh, uh, they they would be looking at, you know, they, I mean, the energy for, say, you know, their data centers and, and they are they're procuring multiple such uh, equipment. Now, they they are looking at those products which they are procuring, which is which are state uh, water equipment. But then they are evaluating those products to figure out how can those products be made green and changing their own specifications to kind of give back and say, okay, uh, you know, how how can I get a more greener product from you know for my uh, operations kind of thing. So it it is everybody is looking at at various aspects of of such kind of things. And I think um, it's it's not one particular sector, so to say. I think uh, all sectors are coming in, and that is what makes sustainability, you know, as we call it in our terms, as a big bet because you know it's it's a it's a global phenomenon. There is an alignment that is coming in. Almost in all organizations, we see a, a, a sponsorship coming from a CXO level uh, on onto the pledge, and and I think that kind of drives it all the way down and and kind of 
the initial easy phases where you know i could buy carbon credits i could do csr i could do you know some of those uh, peripheral things are kind of now coming to their end of uh, you know uh, utility and now the, you know people are looking at more specific implementations more measurable that can start giving them uh, you know the more definite results so to say and i think that that's what makes the uh, future interesting for us uh, from a sustainability perspective so it's not just the environment but it's also the innovation that that will facilitate you know the betterment of environment so uh, you know looking forward to that kind of time in in coming future no no thanks thanks amit and amra for sharing those insights and i think i i probably agree and this is what the report also said that because now sustainability is among the top 10 priorities for ceos ceos across the globe across industry so i think sustainability is a universal topic which is probably fueling the whole big bet business opportunity that sustainability entails so i think with that we wrap up the discussion today and uh, thanks a lot nanda and amit for sharing such in- interesting insights during the discussion so for us that's it from the final episode of tech talk what makes sustainability a key car- priority for tech companies Stay tuned for more insightful discussions happening in the Indian tech industry with Nascom Insights YouTube channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Till then, it's a goodbye from everyone here at Nascom Insights, and thanks again, uh, Amit and Nanda, for all your time for the discussion today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate thanks, that. Thanks, thanks, Amit. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Nanda. Thanks, Neil.